Hello, hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to your group, your Facebook group, this Wednesday night, well, afternoon today, uh, Transformation Through Acquisition Driven Instruction. And I am your host tonight, Berta Delgadillo. And I know that we have a lot of new people uh, joining us who have joined us in the past two weeks. And I just want to take a moment to tell you a little bit about me. That's how I usually start a Facebook Live. I am a Spanish teacher in Savannah, Georgia, and I have created this space so that we can all come together and learn from each other. So um, I am so grateful to have the opportunity to connect with you. I am so grateful to have the opportunity to bring you professional learning sessions every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, there will be something in here that you can come and learn from if you so uh, wish to do. So. I am so glad uh, to see you here. I have been teaching for seven years and I am currently teaching 100% online, 100% virtual. And it's been, a, it's been okay, you know, it's, it's been good. I don't have much stressors in that department. I feel like I'm, I'm doing great. My students are doing good. Uh, however, it's been challenging for me. Those of you who follow me on my, um, on my email list, uh, you guys know that it's been a little bit challenging for me because I have to juggle the teaching with being there for my son and also making sure that you know he's able to do all his work. So juggling that, that has been definitely a challenge. And I know that I'm not alone and I know that I'm not the only one dealing with this. So my heart goes out to you uh, if you are in this same situation because it is tough. Um, however, uh, I am really glad that I'm able to fuel some more um, of, of, of the ideas in the classroom with the sessions that we are bringing here to you each week. So tonight I have with me uh, Mr. Joe Dale, and I'm going to, I mean, I'm just so grateful that, you know, we have connected to bring you this presentation tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to him so he can tell you uh, a little bit about himself and he can uh, lead us into this presentation tonight. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much, Berta, for that, that lovely introduction. And I'm really delighted to be here as well. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm yeah, delighted to be here. I, I, the way that we connected, I saw that uh, on your Facebook group, you were doing different um, tech presentations. And I thought that um, uh, I would get in contact. And I was delighted that uh, you uh, gave me the opportunity of doing this and connecting with your, with your group. Um, uh, I've got my two screens uh, running at the moment. So I've got my presentation on one screen. I've got the StreamYard, which is the first time I've ever used StreamYard, my first ever Facebook Live presentation as well, which is very exciting. I'm very experienced with things like Zoom and Google Meet and things like that, but I've never used their Facebook Live before. So it's very exciting as well. So feel free to ask me any questions in the chat. Uh, I know Berth is going to be doing a great uh, hosting job uh, and then putting up different questions if need be on the screen. Um, uh, this presentation is going to run for about an hour. Uh, on the the first page there, you can see I've got my contact details. So I'm just at Joe Dale on Twitter. If you're not following me already on Twitter and you'd like to, feel free to follow me. Uh, my email address is there as well, joe.talk21.com. This presentation is being recorded. Uh, and uh, Bertha has kindly said that she will um, give me the, the MP4 file afterwards. So I'll be able to put it up on my YouTube channel, which is available at Joe Dale 100. So the idea of this presentation is to give you a bit of context. You'll hear from my accent, I'm from the UK, which is why I suggest that we started at four o'clock uh, Eastern time, uh, because this is uh, just after nine o'clock here in the UK. And um, I didn't want to really be starting a presentation at 11 o'clock at night. Um, so I'm very grateful to Bertha for that. And uh, I really hope you find this useful. Obviously we're all in the same position about um, remote teaching in the UK. Uh, all the schools have now gone back as of September, and that's been very interesting to see how people are uh, getting on with face-to-face -face classes. And it's lovely to see all these positive messages about being enjoying being back in the classroom. But um, my understanding is most uh, teachers in the US at the moment are in a remote teaching context. So I hope this presentation will give you lots of ideas. It's going to give a perspective of what we've been doing in the UK. And I'm going to uh, get going. Here we go. OK, so this is what we're going to try and cover in the next hour. We're going to do a bit of live demonstration as well as uh, presentation. So there might be some new tools here, I'm hoping. So we're going to start off by looking at Jamboard. Uh, we're then going to have a look at the TILT webinar series. So TILT stands for Technology Language Teaching. And as of March, when we went into lockdown, uh, myself and my friend Helen Myers 
who uh, is part of the Association for Language Learning, which is the subject association in the UK to support language teachers. Um, we decided to do a series of webinars and all of those webinars have been recorded. They're all available on my YouTube channel and I'll give you a link to uh, access those later. Um, and we've done over 50 webinars since March. So it's been a lot of work. We've had um, speakers from the UK as well as from the States. Uh, we've had people like Heidi Trude and Catherine Ousselin and people like that, um, who I know, I'm sure, are well known to you, as well as people from Australia and, and further afield. So we're then going to have a look at some security features of, of Zoom, Teams and Meet, uh, some ideas around screencasting, um, a little bit on Flipgrid. I'm going to show you an idea on Flipgrid which normally goes down well. Uh, quick, uh, quicker conversations, which is probably new to a lot of people for promoting speaking, and then a Google form with example exercise types that you can use, particularly aimed at language teachers, um, flippity.net, and then quizzes, uh, particularly looking at how you can make remote listening comprehension activities with quizzes. So lots to cover, um, but let's make a start. So the first thing I thought I would do is talk about Jamboard. So if you've not seen Jamboard before, it's a Google tool which allows you to have an interactive uh, whiteboard, which in a remote teaching context works really nicely. So you, if you have, let's say, Google Meet or you have Zoom uh, or whatever it might be that you're sharing a collaborative whiteboard so all the students can then uh, do activities on that whiteboard using images and text and um, animated GIFs. And what I've done is I've put together uh, three different Jamboards, which have examples uh, of activities you could do with Jamboard, which are aimed at language teachers. So, um, oh, uh, top left as well, it says MFL Twitterati Jam. So if you don't know, the MFL Twitterati is a community of language teachers, language consultants, and language organizations in the UK and, and Ireland and further afield. The hashtag is used by people all over the world and has been for many years. And there's 5,000 members of the MFL Twitterers group, which I manage, which anyone can subscribe to, but you can only have up to 5,000 members on a particular uh, Twitter list. So let's have a look at um, a quick example. So we're going to go on to Jamboard now. And um, as we all know, you can have up to 20 frames on a Jamboard. So you can see here, um, the suggestion here is that you could use Jamboard as a way of recording your screen. So you could, for example, use um, a tool like Screencastify or Loom that uh, Bertha mentioned a moment ago, or um, Screencast-O-Matic. So you could be doing an activity whereby you add text or images onto the screen and you record the screen to do maybe a grammar cast or to explain some sort of uh, activity uh, or maybe have an image with some text and then give a voiceover using Screencastify. So what I've done in this um, particular example is I've in a yellow sticky note, I've written examples of what you could do on each slide. So in the next one, uh, this is a website called Xwords, uh, so xwordsgenerator.de forward slash en if you want the English version. So you could have a starter activity whereby you put in uh, the uh, information like what is the French or Spanish for a particular item of vocabulary, in this case uh, to do with animals. And um, you then uh, get the children to use the pen tool. So you can see you've got the, you know, the uh, all these sorts of things here. You've got the pen tool and then you can write in here into the different boxes to answer the question. So that would be another idea. You can also click undo to get rid of your annotation. Uh, so a quick starter activity using a crossword puzzle maker. If we then go back to here and then go on to the next one, you could also um, uh, drag and drop bitmojis. If you're a fan of GIFs, I used um, the website called gifmaker.me to put together two separate GIFs using the bitmoji Chrome extension and that allowed me to drag and drop that uh, GIF straight into the Jamboard. So if you wanted to have some sort of activity around a GIF, that would be great. Uh, this slide is to do with breakout rooms. If you've used Zoom before and you want to know about breakout rooms, there's a really nice video here uh, uh, by um, an educator called Russell Stannard, who um, has done many videos online. If you do a search for uh, teacher training, uh, teacher training uh, videos, you'll find all his content or Russell Stannard, and he's done many, many uh, video tutorials around uh, web tools that you can use, particularly focusing on languages. Uh, he's a he's an English educator and all the ideas are replicable. Uh, you've then got you know classic um, idea of you know putting a photo in the middle of the jam board. I use a website called Photos for Class, which is royalty free images. And then you, you put the questions either side, which could be done by the teacher or by the student. I'm not going through every single one, but I just want to give you a a little idea. Uh, snipping tool, if you haven't used a snipping tool before, uh, it's wonderful. 
So it comes with Windows. You can just uh, launch it and then drag over any part of the screen and take a screenshot of it. Really, really useful. So you could, for example, have a PDF and you could take a screenshot of the text in that PDF and put it into Jamboard and make it interactive. Um, talking, of, talking of this, if you have Google Classroom, you could uh, set up Jamboard so it appears automatically in each uh, assignment for a student. So each student gets their own Jamboard to work on. Uh, or you could create it so that um, everyone was uh, collaborating on the same one. This one is using the little um, stickers that you get with the app version of Jamboard. Um, so I think something that's very important at the start of the lesson, see how the students are feeling, get them to drag their name um, uh, either at the top or the bottom or in halfway uh, down on the arrow to show how they're feeling. So the idea of this one is all about uh, to see how they're feeling before you start the lesson. And there we are. So that's a few ideas around Jamboard, but there's 60 ideas which I've shared with everyone. And you all, you're going to get the whole presentation of this on the last slide. So you can you can just click on that and then work out um, how to uh, apply that to your own um, your own subject area. So that's that one. Any questions at all about Jamboard before we carry on? Or is that is that clear on how it works? No, we don't have any questions at the moment. We have. Um... Zamia, who is saying that she looks forward for the recap. So <laughs> okay, cool, excellent. So it sounds like uh, this Facebook user has seen me before. So that's lovely. So that's great. Keep the comments coming, everyone. Um, I wanted to say that the iOS and the Android app are slightly different from the uh, website. Uh, the website was recently updated, so you can now have a draggable text box, whereas before you could only have a sticky note um, that was always square whereas they've changed that slightly now. But with the app version, you've got a few other things such as the assistive drawing tools. So for example, if you uh, tap on the uh, the assistive drawing tools within the app, you can do things like click on the, uh, the A icon here, and that allows you to uh, write text with your finger, and then it will then turn into editable um, text, which is very nice. Or if you click on the, the pen tool, that uses what's called auto draw, by Google. So you can draw a picture, for example, of a cat's face. If you remember on the first slide, I showed you a picture of a cat's face. You can draw a picture of a cat's face and then it will then automatically suggest um, a uh, professional looking piece of clip art. You can then click on and it will turn your hand drawing into um, a piece of clip art instead. So that's really nice um, as well. So I'd encourage you to have a look at the, the differences between the app version and the um, and the website version. So I mentioned uh, the Tilt webinars that we started as of March. So the first presentation that we uh, that we did was one that I did, and that was because I put together a um, a Google Doc which is available at the the big long link there at the top is.gd forward slash Tilt Thursday uh, or Thurs Joe Dale. So you have to it is case sensitive. You have to put the capital letters in, but essentially that gives you a link to a forty page Google Doc which I put together um, from March onwards uh, to help language teachers from uh, the UK and from further afield. And it gives you lots and lots of ideas around um, how to support language teachers during uh, the uh, teaching in a remote context. So you'll see, for example, that you've got different headings such as getting started, world language teachers, um, share ideas on remote learning, video conferencing tools, etc. So everything that's there Will be will be useful. I'll just give you a quick flavor. If I click on the the link here, it'll take us straight to the doc, and um, you can see. As I said, it's forty pages long, and it just goes on and on and on. And um, I, as I said, I started doing this in March, and um, I just kept adding to it. So originally, I think it was eighteen pages, and I just kept adding to it, and adding to it, and it just gives you sort of background articles and then lots and lots of tutorials and guides on on how to get to uh, how to, how to uh, make your lessons uh, work as well as possible in a remote teaching context so again you should find that very useful i think let's carry on to the next bit right as part of that um document i came across a quote or an article by the uh, head teacher at um a international school in rome called david tong and this really uh, resonated with me. Uh, and you can see on the screen, I won't, I won't read the whole thing out. You can read that for yourself. But essentially what he's saying is um, he's suggesting that one of the silver linings of this whole situation, even though it's obviously horrible and I'm sure we'd all like to be um, back in, in, in front of a class and not actually having to, to, to learn all these new tools, but a silver lining could be those people who, who were always reluctant on the use of technology 
maybe by being forced to use it will change their mindset as a result of that and then maybe be more willing to use technology in the future because they've had this situation whereby they've been forced to use it and then they can see the power of using tools such as Flipgrid or Jamboard or Wakelet or whatever it might be. Um, so I thought that was a really interesting idea uh, and that's why I've included it in there. That was back in March, but I still think that's true. And um, and just in relation to that, um, talking of the MFL Twitter RT I was just talking about, this is an example of a screenshot of a... Um, a little discussion that, that was happening in April uh, of this year, whereby Francisco has written, as you can see, would we see a boom in the use of tech in education after lockdown? Would schools use it as a tool to close the gap, for example, online intervention sessions, recorded catch up lessons, etc. So then Adam is talking about the fact that, you know, um, he would definitely use it to supplement. He would prefer to be in the face to face classroom, but he can see the value of using different tech tools. And he, he won't feel as scared about um, the use of tech tools in the future, which I just thought was fantastic. And I think those sorts of conversations, I'm sure they're happening in the States as well. They're happening all the time um, as part of the MFL Twitterati community. And it's just really interesting, I think, to, to see the sort of the change in mindset, as I was referring to during Absolutely. this time. I, I have yeah. to I, ha I have to agree with that. But I would say that, I mean, it is my perception that most uh, world language teachers here in the United States are very open to um, using uh, tools like uh, Twitter, not Twitter, I'm sorry. Well, they use Twitter for professional learning, but yeah. Flipgrid and uh, just a, a ton of other tools also. However, I, I know that there are some who might not be as open. And like you said, because of this transition, they're gonna mm. find a way to, to use it. Like for example, I love using GoFormative. And yep. it's one that I actually learned um, a couple of months ago, around March. And I have a friend who is a math teacher. She's a math teacher and she doesn't like to do any technology. But because of this transition, I told her about GoFormative and her reaction was, she called me and she said, where has this tool been all my life? I am <laughs> going to use this when yeah. I go back to the classroom because yeah. I don't understand why I wasn't open to this and why I wasn't using it. I, she said, I'm definitely going to use this, continue to use this even back in the classroom. And for me, I've always been a, a teacher who's uh, just been an avid, um, you know, I, I like to learn and try. And if it doesn't work, I don't use it anymore. Or if it's not, if I'm not seeing it, it's, it's giving me the results I need. Or if it's too difficult, um, I don't use it anymore. But I, I'm willing to give everything a try at least once. And I think that even though I am always, I always try to stay on, on top of the tech tools. I have learned so many I didn't know about in the last couple of months, and 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 I'm really excited to you know go back to the classroom whenever that happens. And obviously, you know, we are still the number one tool or, or humanity. Yeah, of course, yeah. main ingredient, but. Uh, the technology and the new technology we have learned over the last months is just such an enha enhancement. For yeah, what we I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And I, th I think that um, there are lots of teachers out there or the sorts of teachers who are uh, readily sharing ideas on Twitter. Uh, I've not found it as difficult, I think, compared to those people who have always really shunned technology and not, in, not interested in technology. But I think putting together those tilt webinars that I mentioned a moment ago, um, and the fact we've got you know over fifty now, I I particularly sort of pinpointed good people to ask to present about different tools, which I thought either people would would definitely need to start off with, e.g., sort of like a Microsoft environment or then a Google environment, and then lots of other ideas around sort of creative tools uh, in, in, and um, formative assessment tools like GoFormative, like LiveWorksheets.com and, and websites like like that. Um, so we had you know like a coherent plan to support teachers who then. Um, if they're interested, they could then um, uh, go ahead and, and learn about these tools and try them out in the classroom. Absolutely. I think it's been it's, it's been a huge learning curve for lots of people, but it's also been lovely to be part of that community, I think, and help people at the same time. Um, lovely. Thank you ever so much for that. those insights there. That's great. So referring particularly to the Tilt webinars, um, so if you go to the uh, Association of Language Learning London branch, you will find lots of information about the Tilt webinars. Just recently... Uh, my friend Helen has put together a database uh, which you can access uh, here. Uh, don't forget you're getting all of these links uh, in the presentation. So in this uh, database, what Helen has done is she's literally put together all the different um, elements of the different uh, webinars that have been covered. 
Uh, she's done a write-up. I mean, it's, an, it's a huge amount of work. Uh, and this should be a real treasure trove for lots and lots of people. Um, being able to access that, look through it, watch the recordings. All the recordings, as I've said, are available on my on my YouTube channel. So if I show you here, this is my YouTube channel. So not only does it have the Tilt webinars there, it also has uh, lots of uh, other webinars that I've done. As you can see here, we've got Heidi True, Catherine Hussain that I mentioned. Um, lots of people. We've got Mark Connolly as well from the States who did a fantastic session around audio. Lots and lots of presentations there um, to help people at this uh, this very difficult time. So now, I, uh, just, oh, yeah. just, yeah. just one question about the Tilt webinars. They are when the last ones that they have done are they're still uh, occurring and they keep adding to them? Or? They're, they're still they're still happening. So um, I wanted to sort of calm down a little bit. I'm sure you appreciate 50 webinars since March has been very full on. To all, so myself and Helen have done all this work completely for free. We don't make any any money out of it at all. We've just done it because it felt the right thing to do to help the community. And so, yeah, we've done the 50. We're going to carry on doing them, but we're just going to uh, relax a little bit now. So we're going to probably do, say, three or four a month as mm -hmm. opposed to doing sort of two a week, which is what we were doing. In fact, over the, the breaks of April time, we were doing three a week in some cases, uh, which is a lot of work. But um, people were very grateful for that. And so all I'm saying is that the recordings are all there, but we are going to carry on doing them. And, and um, I've got a few people from the States again who have said uh, said yes, but I won't reveal that yet um, until, uh, uh, well, if people want to come along to the TIP webinar, because I think it's it's right that I announced that on the Association of Language Learning website, but we've got a few people from the States who said yes, who are going to be doing further um, webinars for us. So, yeah. These collaborations are so important because, you know, you mentioned that a lot of the teachers in your area are already are already face to face. So we are yeah. eventually going to get there. So the teachers in your area, even though it's a very different scenario in so many ways, however, you know, going back to the classroom is going back to the classroom and they are going to have a, a, a way to share with um, with teachers who are not there yet, um, how they have handled uh, going back yeah. to the classroom. So. So I think it's great if the if people who the people who are watching us tonight, the audience, uh, they want to check out the Tilt webinars. I think it's a great place. We might find some insights on what going back to the classroom feels like. Yeah, definitely. And and deliberately on that point, I asked a few people to uh, present about how do you plan for September? How do you plan for either a face to face situation or if people are going to, into local lockdowns? How do you do like a blended approach? Um, and that's all been yeah, it's been fascinating. So. Um, yeah, th th there's there's so much information there that people will find useful. Uh, if it's okay, I'm just going to carry on. Um, I'm going to talk about um, a particular sort of like little uh, uh, advert, I suppose, for the Tilt webinars that I made as a result of being part of the Bitmoji Craze for Educators Facebook group, which I'm sure lots of people know about. I saw the other day that it has um, uh, over 415,000 um, members now, which it's is just insane. So... I joined it uh, quite early on, and I was really inspired by the people who who were making these iMovie tutorials using the um, trailer option within iMovie. And um, I thought I would have a go at making my own. So here, here we are. It's only a minute long, but it just gives you an impression of the context of where we were in March. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. Here we go. And there we are. That was really easy to put together. If you have the iMovie app on an iPad, um, you could do it on an iPhone as well, actually. And you just basically take the Bitmoji images and then you just use their templates. And each they have a, a variety of different um, trailer templates. 
And um, I used, I think that one's called Superheroes, if I remember correctly. And you just choose the one that you want. And uh, you just, yeah, you just order the timings and all that sort of thing um, as a result of that. So it's uh, it's pretty cool, I think, to say the least. Um, as another example of how the MFL Twitter RT have come together, um, as a result of the, the webinars, I think, um, uh, a, a language teacher called Esmeralda Salgado or Botanes Salgado on Twitter, um, who is the head of languages at King Ely uh, School in Cambridgeshire, she um, put together a Padlet or she started a Padlet and she encouraged people from around uh, the world, but particularly from the UK, to add different ideas around the things they learned in the TILT webinars as well as other other places. So you've got, for example, lots of ideas of escape rooms. I don't know if that's something that, that you have um discussed um, uh, in your group, but certainly there's been a lot of interest around escape rooms in, in, amongst UK language teachers using websites like Genially or Google Forms, Google Sites, um, uh, Bitmoji Classrooms, virtual um, visits, things like that. And so again, I've got the link there for everybody to have a look if they're interested in uh, getting creative or more creative with um, technology and languages. Um, another thing I did right um, sort of early on, sort of March, April time, when people we were first using, in lots of cases, tools like Zoom and Teams and Meet, was I contacted um, language teachers who were experts um, on the use of these uh, different uh, video conferencing tools. I gave them all a Google form with questions in, all the same questions. I then asked them all to fill in the, the questions, and then I double-checked, quality assessed um, all the answers with them as well with other, other experts in their field. So as you can see, you've got questions such as, can attendees join a session before the teacher? Can the teacher enable a waiting room? Can the teacher automatically mute attendees' audio upon entry into a session, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And there's actually two pages worth here, as you can see. And that should be really, really useful. Now, I know with Google Meet and with Teams that they, they're adding new features all the time. There's going to be apparently breakout rooms with Google Meet and what have you. But at the time, this is um, up to date with what you could or you couldn't do with different um, tools. So, again, I think you should find that really, really useful. Um, if you're not used to to using these uh, video conferencing tools, if you're allowed to do live lessons. I don't know in the States how much you're allowed to do live lessons. That's certainly been a big debate in the UK. Some state schools in particular ban live lessons because uh, for safeguarding reasons. In other words, the fact that the teacher can see inside the, the children's um, homes and vice versa. And there are lots of schools who aren't happy about that. And also in more impoverished backgrounds, you might have, for example, uh, the parents having like the one laptop in the house and the other children don't have access to that. So then how can they do live lessons? So there's, there's been, been the big debate between um, asynchronous and synchronous um, lessons, which has been also been fascinating, I think, as well to see. Uh, in relation to that, asynchronous lessons, um, lots of teachers have been learning how to do screencasting. So again, we've talked about some of these tools already. Uh, Loom, Screencaster 5, screencaster Matic. There was um, an article in the Times Educational Supplement, the TESS, in March, talking about, uh, well, the opinion of this of this person, Kai Vacha, four reasons pre-recorded lessons are your best option. I can see the point around safeguarding, what have you, but I still think the idea of having like a, a meetup at the beginning in a live session is really good. Then maybe setting a task and then maybe having some sort of interactive activity at the end in order to um, connect with the students and to make sure that, you know, they've understood the learning outcomes that you're trying to achieve. Um, I also wrote an article around um, the use of screencasting on the Facebook group, Modern Languages Teachers Lounge, which is organized by Linguascope. And you can get access to that link there at the bottom. So all the links I'm referring to are at the bottom of each slide. So you should find that uh, very handy. And here's a couple of comments from people on Twitter about using um, screencasting. So you see there, we've got Mazegan talking about using Loom to walk students through a sample answer, saves time in class, promotes autonomous learning, sense making, and allows for a flipped classroom. Cannot recommend this tool enough. And then what I particularly like about this is underneath, it has a tweet from Loom or a reply from Loom saying, love this, so glad we can be useful for your class. And then likewise, we have this sort of like conversation that you see all the time. Ms. Grice, MFL, used um, Loom for the first time yesterday, thanks for the tip, and was surprised how easy it was to use. Definitely recommend it for anyone teaching from home. How does this compare to screencast thematic? I've been using that one so far. I can't compare because I've only used Loom, but it's so simple. The kids really like it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's sort of like helping each other out all the time. It's been great. Yeah, Bertha. My favorite one is Loom. I have used Screencast-O-Matic. I have used Screencastify. 
and I've used Loom and I just, I love that how easy Loom is. Maybe Screencast-O-Matic has some features that Loom doesn't have, but you cannot be free. And Loom did make an announcement early, sometime in April, or no, actually March, that they were going to make their um, website free for teachers and students forever. Yeah. That That's is right. a very strong statement. So I'm going to support Loom. Uh, yeah, no, I, th I think Loom's fantastic. And that, that the link to the Loom Pro uh, version, which, as you say, is free for educators, that's as part of that big document, which I shared earlier. But um, what I like about um, Screencastify is the fact that you can record up to five minutes. I know it's unlimited with Loom, but you can record up to five minutes and you get the, the pen tool um, as part of the free package. Whereas if you want the pen tool with Loom, you have to then upgrade to the the pro account which you again you can do for free but it takes a few days to get that account but once you've got that account then yes you can do lots of things with loom and there's also an ios app with loom as well which syncs with your account which is very nice so you can do a um a screencast on your ipad and then access it via the account using the um the chrome uh, extension which is great i think um but also i think just lots of teachers didn't realize they could just you know narrate audio in a powerpoint and so there were other teachers on, say, Facebook and other places who were then saying, oh, yeah, it's very easy. Just record your audio with your PowerPoint. You turn it into a video. It's simple. And I think that really opened people's eyes to what you could do as well, particularly the, the more reluctant ones for using technology. But I agree with you. Loom is very nice. I see so much potential in Loom going back to the classroom. When I go back to the classroom, I can send an email, not the one that is typed, but I can screencast you know, myself and tell a parent, some news and yep. you know, yeah. typing a long email, I can just, you know, show up, kind of show up <laughs> through that video. And then also I can use it to create videos for my, um, you know, higher achievers and actually differentiate instruction for them. So if they're done faster than the others and I have an assignment on a QR code through a Loom video and, and you know, there you have it. It's, it's, it's yeah. mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more, but I also think that with Flipgrid, which we're gonna have a look at later, um, the fact you can now do screencasting within Flipgrid is also really nice in the way that it's all kept within yeah. your private group yeah. as well. So that's another another thing which we can have a look at. Uh, they definitely uh, did an amazing later. job over the summer. <laughs> so. Amazing, amazing. Oh. In fact, talking of Flipgrid, here we are. So um, I'm sure you all know Flipgrid, but I'm going to show you something which hopefully you've not seen before or make you think about how you can use Flipgrid. So this is Jane Bastner on the left hand side, who's a big fan of Flipgrid. She's a head of languages at Downhouse School um, in uh, uh, Wiltshire in the UK, so in the south of England. And in this example, she's got the the image um, up on her screen. Um, I think officially it's called a sticker, if I remember correctly. And she's annotating over the top. She's talking about how to form the simple future in French. So you can see her her, her face, you can see the uh, the image, and you can see her annotations, and it can all be be saved as a Flipgrid short, which is, again, she's a big fan of as well. On the right-hand side, you've got her uh, explaining a grammar point. Uh, in this case, um, how to form the perfect uh, tense using uh, être in French. And again, she's got her voiceover. She's annotating on this on an image which she's used, which looks like it's been made in PowerPoint. And then um, you've got um, a teacher here called uh, Sam uh, Carey. I don't know if you know him from the States, who's done loads and loads of videos around remote teaching ideas. And this one is all about Flipgrid, as you can see, but I would really encourage you to have a look at uh, his content. So it's from the uh, the new EdTech Classroom is the YouTube channel, it's fantastic. And then you've got um, Jess on the right-hand side there, bottom right, just talking through different ways in which you can use Flipgrid. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually show you something live using Flipgrid and Google Earth. So this is just here and there's a little, um, screenshot I've got of a school in April that were talking about um, the fact, you know, some really lovely videos from year nine. So that would be like 14 year olds uh, this morning on Flipgrid, it even got a subjunctive, such community of confidence. We may not be face to face, but Zoom, Flipgrid and Hangouts are our next best things, which I thought was lovely. And then you've got the screen recording uh, option here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually come out of here right now. And I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go to uh, Flipgrid, which is here. And just log in like that. It's just waiting. Ah, oh, I have noticed actually Flipgrid occasionally. It's sort of, it's just give me a second. Maybe I won't do this live. I'll just try one more time. Or let me go to a new tab and let's see if I can bring it up. When I was demoing this beforehand, it was fine. Let's just see if it works. Ah, oh, okay. Let's see if it works now. 
educator login. Ah, okay, perfect. Right, so what I'm going to do is just click add a topic like that, and we'll just call it um, Bertha Belgadio uh, FB group. Okay, uh, and then example you have to put description in don't you i think mm -hmm. uh for the recording time i'm just going to change that i'm just going to record for 10 i'm not going to record for 10 minutes i've just put 10 minutes here um and then that's all fine make it public like that and that's all fine and then click create topic and then click all set right so now i'm going to click on the recorder response and i'm just going to change my camera which uh i wasn't expecting that hang on um oh there we are right okay cool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to google earth like this is that going to work oh hang on. i've got a wireless keyboard that occasionally doesn't behave as the way it wants to. But that's the great thing about doing things live. You never know if it's going to go wrong. It's all good now. One understands it's us. So. It's fine. It's all good. Right. So I'm going to launch Google Earth. There we are. There we are. That's what I wanted. And then we'll get rid of that one. Right. So it's going to load up now. And while it's doing that, what I'm, uh, while it's doing that, I'll just explain the idea. So I'm going to share my screen, uh, which I think I should be able to do. Let's just try it anyway. Uh, while I'm sharing already uh, in uh, in StreamYard. So here we are. We've, we've got the earth here like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I click here and go on the options option. And I'm going to click record screen. Start recording screen, Chrome tab, and I'm going to select Google Earth and click share. Right. So... What I'm going to do now, I could just click on the search option and put in a particular place I want to go to, but why not click here where it says I'm feeling lucky? So if I click on here, I'm going to go anywhere in the world. Okay, so I'm going to go to, I've got no idea where I'm going, but apparently I'm going here. I'm not even sure exactly where that is, but anyway. And so I could then ask in the target language, what can we see? Are we in the countryside? Are we in the town? What items can we see? So this seems to be... This seems to be some sort of like hill or mountain. Uh, we can see lots of streets. It's obviously an urban place. We can see, um, I didn't choose to go to a Spanish place, but you can see you've got different uh, uh, Spanish words there. And then what I can do is I can drag this, the peg man here to where the little marker is, and I can go straight into Street View. So as a result of that, okay, I can then say, okay, so where are we? What can you see? There's a man there. Where's he been? What's he going to do? What's he thinking about? Okay, so from a cultural point of view, we can find we can we can ask lots of questions in the target language and get lots of um, interesting answers. You know, what's the weather like? Uh, is this a what sort of building is this? You know, what can we see here, etc. And then we can then click on I'm feeling lucky, and we can go somewhere else. So now we're going to France. There we are. So we've been to a Spanish speaking place and now we're going to France and we could do the same thing. So this time, ah, oh, see, that's that's completely different, isn't it? We're not in a town situation. I bet we can't have um, street view here. Let's just try. I'd be very surprised. Let's just try. Is it going to work? Oh, it's going to work. Crikey. OK, so now again, that's per wow. Perfect. OK, so I've got no idea why, you know, why we've gone here. It's just that's just so again, you could say, OK, what have they just been doing? How's that person feeling here? What's the weather like? Where are they? And do all of that in the target language, but be recording at the same time using screen recording. Um, and then I can go back to Flipgrid, click Stop Recording. What I'm going to do now, I could just and then click watch on the back. search option and put in a particular place I want to go to. Okay. But why not click here where it says, there we are, just pause that. I can click Next, uh, take a selfie, Next. It's going to upload and then away you go. So if you've not seen that in, in Flipgrid before, sharing the screen, uh, why not do sort of like a web quest using Google Earth mm -hmm. um, as a way of using uh, Flipgrid in that way? I just thought um, I wanted to share that with everyone because it might be something that you've not thought about before or realized that you can screen share yeah, with, um, with, with Flipgrid in this way. 
used the newest updates, but I hadn't thought about using, I knew they had a new screen share. However, I was like, why would I do a screen share? But now you've given me a reason, so. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So there we are. There, and I could, I could, you know, talk all about how to moderate videos in Flipgrid and all that, but we haven't got time uh, now. I just want to give you a flavor of how that would work. So that's, um, that's Flipgrid. That's my, my top tip for Flipgrid. Um, uh, and I'm sure you all know that at the start of August, they, they updated Flipgrid with a new Flipgrid and you can do loads of more things with the camera and all the rest of it. But yeah, that's, You can yeah. add a lot of supporting structures to it when you are filming yourself as a teacher. So it's great. It's amazing. I can see there's a couple of comments in the chat. So, uh, yeah. the, the, okay, so Joseph wants to use Google Earth. That's great. Yeah. Diana, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, so it was good. Yeah, that was Google Earth. So it was Google Earth, the web version. Absolutely. So uh, uh, if you've not used it before, yeah. have a, yeah, check right. it out. Mm -hmm. um, right. So the next slide, this was um, uh, put together for um, another presentation that I did. I wanted to ask uh, two questions. First of all, you know, how has remote teaching been for the last few weeks? That was the first question. And the second question is, um, you know, as you can see, another question I've been pondering, how do you ensure interaction with your students when teaching either synchronously or asynchronously, which is a really, really important point around uh, remote teaching. How do you keep the, the children engaged? And so I asked the community to, uh, to share some ideas and that's exactly what they did. And then I then took all those ideas and I summarized them in this document here, which again, I'm sharing with you, but I just give you a quick flavor uh, of this. So as you can see, um, I put this together in May of this year and it gives uh, lots and lots of different ideas. For example, um, set Kahoot challenges, Gimkit uh, challenges or BBC bite-sized activities for asynchronous practice, do lots of retrieval practice, short recall quizzes at the beginning, set assignments on more gra grammatical tasks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all practicing teachers, language teachers who have shared their um, experiences of remote teaching. So again, I thought that the uh, US uh, world language educators would find that really, really useful. So that's, um, that's that slide. Um, right, I'm now gonna go through some of these. So I'm sure you all know Google Forms, but what I've done is I put together this example. I was really inspired by uh, an Australian uh, teacher called Chris Betcher or Betcher Boy on Twitter. And he put together an example of a Google form which include lots of quiz questions. So I thought that's a really good idea. So I will do a languages uh, version of that. So as you can see here, um, it's got, you know, what's your surname, what's your first name? I always put that at the top of a form so that when you export the results as a, as a Google Sheet, you can order them alphabetically. So they'll then mark, match your mark book, which is a nice tip, I think. So what I've done here, essentially, is I've gone through uh, each exercise type that you could use using the particular um, uh, possibilities such as a multiple choice or um, uh, what well, you'll see in a moment. But basically, the first one is using multiple choice. So I've given instructions on how to set up each question. And you can see here you've got, you know, what is part of past participle of the verb ali in French, and then you just click on the correct radio button. Here you've got four possible answers, but as pictures instead of just text. So again, uh, describing how to do that. This one, I use the snipping tool to take a screenshot of some text. Um, so obviously I've just written example text here and then having, uh, again, radio button. So you've got the image as the prompt with multiple choice. This one is using uh, images, uh, not only as the question, but also as the answer. So again, if you want to have more images that way, that would work really nicely. True or false one for multiple choice. Um, this one is, is quite cool. So here um, I've used a website called Online Voice Recorder, which allows you to record audio. Let me just show you how this works. So I go to Online Voice Recorder. And that. I then record my audio like here, like this. Okay, so this is an example of using the online voice recorder to record audio. I really like this website because it just works on all devices. You then uh, stop recording, and then you can then edit the beginning and the end of a recording as you can with Flip Flipgrid, and it saves automatically as an MP3 file as well, like this. So I've just made my recording. As you can see, you've got this sort of the little uh, playhead at the beginning and the end, which you can then move, and then you can click Save. Uh, you save it. Uh, I'm not going to actually save this right now because normally what I would do is I would then upload that into Google Drive, into a folder. I'd make the folder shareable. So it meant that it was could be accessed by anyone within either within your domain or um, anyone with a link. 
Um, but I'm not because we're recording this now. I'm not going to show everyone my Google Drive, but that would be the idea. You'd upload the audio, you'd make it a shareable link, and then you could then go back to your Google Form and you could then um, put it straight into the Google Form, which is here. Uh, and that's what I've done here. So I've then added the link. So you're basically making uh, audio files for the four different uh, options, which again, um, you can see here, what is the correct pronunciation of answer one? So the word here, I've, I've written answer one, but it could be whatever you want to have as pronunciation. And you've got the four different links there to give um, four different possibilities. And then you select the correct one. Uh, this one is not multiple choice, it's multiple choice grid. So this is like a matching activity whereby you um, put in the items along the top and then uh, down the side. Um, having used this a few times, I would recommend for the, if you have terms which are shorter, you have them along the top and the longer ones you have going down the side simply because if you have longer ones going along the top, then uh, they don't fit nicely. Um, and I wouldn't have more than nine as well, which you'll see in a moment in relation to the, um, the dialogue. So if you're looking for a matching activity, that's a nice one. This is a reordering words in a sentence. So again, the same principle, multiple choice grid, and you just click in the correct um, radio button and then it reshuffles the row order each time you do this automatically because of the way that I've set it up and the instructions of how to do that are there. This is putting the uh, a dialogue into the correct order. So again, because these are quite long, these sentences or these, these phrases, that's why I put them down the left-hand side as opposed to put them along the top because they wouldn't have fitted if I put them along the top, which is why I put the numbers here as opposed to the longer phrases, if that makes sense, and so on and so forth. This one is um, a drop-down one, whereby you have all the verbs that go with être apart from one, which ironically is être. So you just select that one as the um, as the the um, the drop-down option. You've got uh, this one check boxes when you've got more than one correct answer for a question. So you've got you know which of these verbs is regular in French. You've got two of them are regular and two of them are irregular. So you have more than one correct answer. This is similar to the one that I did before, but this time you've got the listening um, comprehension, uh, the, the audio at the top in the question. So you listen to the audio and then you then um, tick the boxes which are correct and the ones which are not correct, you leave blank and and so on and so forth. So there's all these different um, exercise types. And the, the penultimate one here is using Vokaroo, which I thought was quite a nice idea. I'm sure a lot of you know Vokaroo, but just to show you the idea, you go to vokaroo.com. You record your audio like this. Here's an example of using Vokaroo to record a uh, speaking practice that you then post straight into a Google form. So I then click save and share. I click the copy option here. So I've copied that link. I go back to my Google form and then in the short answer box, I paste in the link and that means that's sort of speaking practice for the teacher to then mark. So in other words, all the children will record using Vokaroo, which works on all devices. And then in the Google Sheet that the teacher then exports, uh, the teacher has all the links and then can can then give it um, give it a mark um, uh, by hand, as it were, as opposed to um, the form marking it for them. And the last one is uh, a linear scale option, like a student voice one, when they have to say if they strongly agree or disagree with a particular statement, which could be, for example, online learning is a good idea, that sort of thing. So those are a few ideas around Google Forms, and uh, I've given you the link, the two links here, the links to the original plus a copy of that form, so you can then use it as you wish. This is um, an example in Spanish that a teacher who is in a Facebook group I'm part of uh, created as a result of seeing my example. And so you can see here that she's used the multiple choice with images option. She's got the uh, adding a text option using a sentence builder. Um, and that was really lovely to see. So that's an example from a real teacher using uh, Google Forms. Uh, any other any other questions so far, or are we good to go? We're good to go. We don't have any questions. Okay. So um, next question is, have people heard of Flipperty.net? Because I'm a big fan of Flipperty.net. If you've not seen it before, it's a free website. You essentially um, use one of their templates. They have lots of different templates they have access to and you um, uh, uh, you create a Google Sheet or you copy the Google Sheet template, you fill it in, and it then generates different types of activities. So this one is using the Flippity Randomizer option. So we're big fans of sentence builders, as we call them in, uh, in the UK. And this is an example of this. If I just show you what I mean, if I click on this link here, you can add all these different items 
in different columns. I'll show you the example of the Google Sheet in a moment. But if I just click here, what happens is it will spin all the different wheels until it comes up with a phrase. So here you can see it's coming up with, um, I prefer to go every day. Uh, okay, so yeah, I prefer to go every day, but when it's hot, and then you click again, and then it gives you another phrase to say. So that could be, for example, uh, I want to dance in the town, in the um, uh, the uh, Santa Dalosia, the amusement center, uh, uh, but when it's hot and it carries on. Now, the idea behind this is you have like a list of phrases and it just constantly generates new language, which you can then use either for translation purposes. So you could do this um, as a whole class activity and then the students have to then write the translation in the chat. Um, or you can use it uh, for speaking, which I'm going to show you in a second. But before I do that, um, I've got a Chrome extension called Helper Bird installed, Helper Bird. So if I just highlight the text here, let's see if this works. If I right click the um, the selected items and I click on Helper Bird uh, like that. Oh, that's interesting. That's not come up. Oh, that's OK. So they've changed this recently. Right. So you click on Helper Bird tools and then you click on Immersive Reader and then enable. Let's see if this works now. They've obviously updated it since I last. Let's see. Oh, yeah, perfect. Phew. Right, so now if I click play, it should read this back to me in French. Let's see if it works. J. Verdancer of Centre ah. de Loisir. No, it's doing it with an English accent, which is obviously not the idea. What should have happened is it should have recognized it in French, but it's obviously not working right now. Let me just refresh the page, see if that makes a difference. So let's just do that one more time. But the idea is it should recognize it automatically in that language. But for some reason, well, I can see they've updated it. So it might be that there's something I've not enabled. Uh, let me just try one more time. Immersive reader enable and click play. Je veux jouer au billard à la plage, mais s'il pleut. Right, it's working now. There we are. So in other words, you can generate randomly phrases and then a uh, helper bird will read it back to you using what's called immersive reader, which is a Microsoft um, tool. So that's the idea there. And then if I go on to the next one, this is an example of what you would do. You'd have like a Google Sheet and you'd have the different um, items in the different columns. So it would then take one item from each of the columns to generate um, a sentence. Um, and then on this one, this is um, a friend of mine, Mike Elliott, who's a head of languages in a school in the south of England. And I'm, he, uh, he actually used uh, Loom to do this. I'm just going to play this, the, this tweet, which should have a video. Yeah, this is a video which he created using Loom. Just going to... Uh, Hi. Oh, so this is um, an idea of uh, how to use... Uh... Just pause that for a second. So what he's doing here is using uh, Flipgrid to record the screen while he's running the Flippity randomizer. So he's practicing speaking and uh, translation. So I'll just give you a flavor of what he does here. Here we go. Um, a Flippity randomizer within Flipgrid in order to offer students the opportunity to, to practice pronunciation and simultaneous or spontaneous translation, um, hopefully in quite an easy and engaging way. So I've created a topic on a Flipgrid that, that I have for my year seven class. Um, I have included some instructions. Okay, so click on this randomizer link. So that's a Flipgrid ran um, randomizer that's been created already. I've asked students to open it in another window. I've already got it open here. Okay, so it's already ready to go. Um, I've then asked students to record their, their video, but instead of recording their face, I want them to record their screen, which I which you can do. And then within that, they need to select the randomizer screen. That's the one to record. And then um, I've set the video for three minutes. And what I want them to do in that three minutes is to read out whichever randomly generated sentences they have, uh, read them out in French, and then to translate them immediately into English um, and to do as many of them as they can in three minutes. So I'm going to show you how you would do that. So I'm logged on as a student now. If you click on here to record a response, it's going to give me some options here um as to what we can record so i don't want to record my face i'm going to screen record my screen okay so i'm going to capture my screen i'm going to click on that and then going to choose a, an application window so i'm going to click on that 
So this is now, so now I'm going to flip to that and start doing it. Okay. So mon frère est assez généreux. My brother is quite generous. Ma mère peut être vraiment travailleuse. My mother can be really hard working. Ma tante est vraiment amusante. My aunt is really funny. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a flavor of how he's using that. He's he's asking the children to translate the phrases, but then also practicing their pronunciation as well by screen recording, which I just think is a really nice idea. Great idea. I think you just gave me an idea with this because uh, we recently did a story in my classroom and I think I can also use this uh, flip. I, I had heard of Flippity through Heidi Truth. Uh, yep. Heidi was Which is amazing. Oh, hello, Heidi. Um, but yes, I had heard about it and I have seen, you know, it, it has so many templates to create all types of things, but I have not seen the specific one. So you just gave me an idea and he just gave me an idea because I can use the same sentence uh, builder uh, with uh, with target structures from the story we we're just doing, and I can put my students into breakout rooms, and each and they can just kind of do like popcorn translating of you know target structures we have been acquiring through storytelling, uh, and they can actually you know uh, test and challenge themselves in small groups using that function. So that's amazing. That sounds amazing. That sounds fantastic. Um, I can see in the chat um, uh, people are asking about the resources. I'm going to share the whole presentation with you on the last slide, so don't worry about that. Um, so, and Joseph's asked about do students need an account? Um, so they do need an account to use Flipgrid, um, but it needs to be either a Google account or a Microsoft account. So they can uh, record their screen, etc. but they do need to have an account to do that. Um, I want to say uh, one more thing, uh, especially if you're teaching remotely uh, well, or 100% or virtual, the, whatever your situation is. And even if you're in the classroom. So Joseph, since you asked this question, please be very patient with your students when they are accessing Flipgrid for the first time. For us, it might seem like a really easy step, but for them, it's a little bit challenging. Um, I'm when I started using Flipgrid with this new set of students right now, and I'm 100% virtual, even though I created two short tutorial videos on how to access the account on your cell phone and how to access uh, Flipgrid on your computer, I still had a lot of questions and I still had to do a lot of troubleshooting. So absolutely use Flipgrid. It is an amazing tool, but remember to be patient with the students and encourage them to try again. You, you're going to have to tell them, hey, we're going to use this amazing tool, but you have to be patient because, you know, it takes a little while to, like, get it situated. But once they get it going, they get really, really good at it. That's just been my experience. Um, yeah, that's a great tip. I think that's true. I think that's um, that's very true. This is another example of another Flippity.net uh, exercise. So this one is called Flippity Manipulatives, um, whereby you have your Google Sheet, you put in the different items, and if you... Uh, record a Vokaroo uh, link. You can then add that within the uh, Google Sheet and it, and it turns it into a player automatically. So the idea of this one is that you play the audio like this. Last week, I went to the cinema to watch the latest James Bond film. It was great. Afterwards, I went to the restaurant. OK, and then you then have to obviously drag uh, each part of the, uh, the different tiles together. So again, any sort of reordering activity uh, would be lovely for this. And I love the way that you can record the audio with Vokaroo and then turn it into a listening comprehension. And with Vokaroo, the audio is deleted after three months, but then you can just re-record re uh, re it and add it back to the Google Sheet and regenerate the, the activity. And when you share that link with the students, it'll it'll the the order of the tiles will be different from everyone. So every, And every time you refresh the page, it'll be a different order as well. So that's a nice um, remote listening comprehension. People haven't asked, but I know, uh, I know they will ask later. Yeah. Um, so when you when you create one of these, do you just share the link of the document to, with the students? How do you know they have completed what you have assigned them? So yeah, that's a great question. So in that example, what I would say is you'd have to either use a, some sort of screen recording or get them to take a screenshot and then share the screenshot with you to show they've done the activity. Okay. Um, or maybe fill in a Google form to show they've got the right order, that sort of thing. So in other words, um, they do the activity there and then, but then they need some sort of evidence. So it could be a screenshot or a Google form or, or that's or Google Classroom or whatever it might be to show um, 
the evidence that they've completed it. That's what I'd recommend. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I know we're sort of running out of time, but I'm just going to show this one live, if that's okay. I have done a video tutorial, but it's better if I show it to you live. Yes, so I have never heard of this one, okay? I, oh, I this is amazing. Okay, this is amazing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Quicker quicker.education which looks like this i need to log in quickly okay so let me go there there we are sign in okay so what so it's it's free to have an account uh you can do all the things i'm showing you for free the audio is kept for three months and then it's deleted but if you want to um keep it forever then you have to pay like a couple of dollars a month and that's all for unlimited audio uh, so which is incredible right so what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, uh hang on let me just click on here click here and go to um let's just click home here we are right so then i clicked on the three dots uh, three lines here and i clicked on home okay and then you go down and you click. Well, there's two ways of, do, of doing this. You can either click on print QR code stickers. That will generate a PDF with lots of different QR codes. In fact, let me just show you. I'll show you the whole thing. It'll take a little bit longer, but then you can see the whole thing. So if I click print QR codes and I click generate stickers, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a PDF that will um, download to um, Chrome I'm using the Chrome browser. I'll then click on that link. You'll then see all the QR codes. And the idea is you then scan one of the QR codes, and that will give the option to record uh, your audio. That audio that will then be attached to that individual QR code. And then you print out the QR, you print out the sheet, you cut up the QR codes, and you stick it into the children's books, um, which, uh, which works really nice for, for audio feedback, for individual audio feedback. But in this particular example, I'm going to show you quicker conversations, which is really good for uh, remote speaking practice, um, which um, which I think is particularly useful in, in everyone's current uh, context. So, yeah, can you see now it says download stickers? So I mm -hmm. click download stickers. It downloads. There we are. If I click save, here's the here it is now. So this is what it looks like. And if I now just uh, zoom in so to say this one here and then using my ipad i'll launch the camera icon on my ipad there we are and i'm just going to scan this qr code like this okay and then i click on the on this on the little uh, notification that comes up and now i don't know if you can see that but i've got you'll see it better in a moment when i share my screen but basically i've got the microphone option so i tap on the microphone like this um i then have to sign in again like that okay sign in and then i get the option that's interesting it doesn't seem to okay let me just try one more time sign in and uh, there we are right so now i've got the you probably can't see that i've got the record button so if i click record click allow for the microphone right so now it's recording. I'm recording um, some audio right now, which is attached to this QR code. Press stop. OK, so it now uploads onto the servers. The servers are based in the UK or in the EU. And now um, that's all good. So now I can tap view your quicker at the bottom. There we are, and we've done it. So now if I scan that QR code, or if anyone scans that QR code on my screen right now, the first one, the one on the left-hand side, you should be able to hear the audio. So if I do this now, oh, like this. If I do this, and I hold this next to the microphone. There we are. And if I press play, let's see if you can hear it. Microphone, right. So now it's recording. I'm recording um, some audio right now, which is attached to this QR code. Yes, press I can stop. hear it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. So that's for individual feedback for individual QR codes, but also, so you will burn it and you will, I guess you will put the name of the student it's directed to instead of like. Yeah, you could do. You, you could do. Obviously, it's going to be in chronological order. So the idea is you, you print out the sheet with all the QR codes on, QR codes on having added audio to each individual QR code. And then you then cut up the, uh, the paper 
for each QR code and you stick it into the children's exercise book. That will be in a face-to-face -face context. Mm -hmm. But I thought I'd show you that first. But now I'm going to show you the conversation option, which is also free. So to do that, I go back to the home option, home the home screen. This time I'm going to click on create instant feedback. Okay. So now I go down and you can see here it says start a quicker conversation. So it's the purple circle here that you want. So you click on that. You can put a title in here, which is the same as a tag. So you can then easily find your uh, conversations that you've done later. But for now, I'm just going to click on record like, like this. Here we go. So blah, 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 blah. This is the first part of my conversation. And I click stop. And as you can see, it's uploading onto the screen, onto the servers. There it is. I can delete the audio. I can then listen back to it. I can also, for free, I can add a photo. I can add some text. I could add a web link. So I could, in other, in other words, I could sort of set out um, um, uh, an exercise with a photo. Maybe it could be um, some text or whatever it might be on some instructions. And then here, I can allow different response types. So if I only want the children to record audio, I can untick all these other options. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this as well is you can moderate the conversation. So I can click here, a bit like with Flipgrid, and you can moderate the conversation. So I now click here, start your quicker conversation. What will happen is this will now come up. And again, if I um, generate a QR code, so if I click on here, which is um, the QR code um, extension, which I've got, and I just scan this QR code. Again, anyone can scan this right now if you want to like this okay and i then tap on the notification and that will now allow me to record audio so here again on the screen i've got the uh the microphone option so i'm going to tap on the microphone and i'm going to tap record here we go okay blah 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 this is part two of the conversation so in other words this could be a way of having an asynchronous conversation with different students or it could be a way of creating a presentation and then the teacher giving audio feedback to the students. OK, then we click stop. It uploads. There we are. And now you can see that that's now appeared uh, here. Let me just get rid of the QR code. So I would love someone to record something for me right now. If I click here and give you the link, I don't know if I can. Um, how, how do I input? the? Can I put that in the chat? No. Oh. I. I don't, it doesn't work with the chat directly. Um, okay, no problem. But I would love someone to, to scan that. Let me just put it, bring it up again. Uh, if someone wants to scan that QR code and they can record the audio, because what will happen is it will say um, approve or delete. So in other words, you because I'm signed in with the same account, that's why I haven't got the approve or delete option that comes up. But if someone were to scan that right now, I would love someone to do it live if you're happy to do that. If you scan the QR code, uh, it means that, and you record something, it means that it will appear on the screen, but it will say approve or delete. And that's because I've turned on moderation. So in other words, you can uh, do that, you know, really, really easily. Uh, you could share that link in a breakout room or um, as part of Teams or Classroom, get all the children to record their audio, and it goes all to the same to the same place. The other thing you could do as well, if you want to keep the audio permanently, you can right-click any of the players and click Save Audio As to download the audio as well. I think everyone's being a bit shy right now, but um, well, remember that we have kind of like a we're a little bit delayed, so I don't uh, know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Another thing I could. Uh, let me think. Yeah. No. Okay. That's for. Ah, oh, brilliant. So we got an example. Phew. We got an example. So I can now press play and have a listen. Uh, Recording audio from Bradford, England. Amazing. So that's fantastic. So I think that's totally appropriate. So I'm going to click approve. <laughs> Yeah, and now it's appeared. Can you see? And now we've not, now we've got another one. Oh, yeah, that's only oh, that's ten seconds long. Let's have a listen to this one. Same to the same place. The other thing you could do as well, if you want to keep the audio permanently, you can right click any of the players. And click Someone's being shy, so I just click approve. But you get the idea. So that's yeah. how you moderate. Uh, let's have a listen to this one. Again, you're being very shy. It's fine. I click approve. So I love the way you can do this remotely. I'm just showing how it can be done. Right now, now let, sharing the yeah, screen. Sorry were able to respond and um and you know we were actually to have a conversation even right now we were to just ask the question about language teaching then people will be able to 
respond and give some feedback and questions. That's amazing. Exactly. Exactly. And I actually use, because I do a podcast as well with um, Senor G or Noah Geisel, who I'm sure a lot of you know, Senor G on Twitter. And um, I did um, a test with Quicker whereby I asked people to describe what life was like, life, what life was like under lockdown. And lots of people recorded one minute bits of audio, which I'm going to put in a future episode of the podcast. If you haven't heard of it, it's the mfltwitteratipodcast.com is the website. And there's 10 episodes there. And we're planning on doing some more soon. Now, um, the other lovely feature here is you can click on the lock, the padlock option. And that now locks the conversation, which means no one else can yeah. send that, um, that uh, can send a recording. So I'm going to do that right now. So I've locked the conversation and I click lock conversation here. And that's it. That's it. Perfect. So that's how quicker conversations work. And it's really nice, I think. So I appreciate we're sort of running out of time here, but I'll just finish I off. It's a great tool for interpersonal. Um, yeah. There are some variations to why, like to interpersonal, but we got to work with what we have. So this is a great alternative. Um, yeah. We do have a question that was asked earlier. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was about Bokaru. And, yep. and she was asking, it's my friend Michelle. So she was asking if a student records with Bokaru, does it keep the recording on their iPad? No, it doesn't. So everything is saved um, on the web, but then you can then, but it's all private. And then you can then either delete the recording or you can download the recording as well. So it used to be that Vokaru didn't work on iPads, but they updated it recently. And now it, it's using HTML5, which means it, it works on all devices. So it's really nice from that point of view. Yeah, because she's saying, I was uh, wondering if I can use Vokaru for an assessment, but I don't want students to be able to share the recordings with future blogs. So right, there's not a way around that. The only way, um, so what Voku is great for is it's easy to record and share. If you don't want them to be able to share, um, what I would do is I would let me have a think. Um, you'd have to get them. To, yeah, you, what probably an easy way of doing it is to use some sort of app like Voice Record Pro, which works on iOS and on um, uh, on Android. Record the audio and then upload it straight to Google Drive, and then share that folder with the teacher or use or use something like flipgrid whereby you or quicker when you're recording it live within the presentation or within the within the um the group as it were um and then it goes straight there so you can't share it um otherwise that would be what i would say i wouldn't use vocary for that if you're concerned about sharing it because it's supposed to be easy to share that's the whole point of vocary really so i'd use a different tool for that um okay um just talking of speaking and and, and listening um ideas during lockdown, I decided to essentially write all the ideas I had around speaking and listening skills, which took me about two days to write uh, To write it. This was in April of this year. So I put this again on the Facebook group, but because um, it was changed from public to private, it means you can't get access to the article unless you sign up to Facebook. So I then put it together into a Google Doc, which is available on, at the bottom here. So you can, you've got the whole article in the Google Doc um, as well for your reading pleasure. And um, I've just talked about this. I'm not going to demonstrate this live, but quizzes is similar to Kahoot if you haven't seen it before. But what I particularly like about it is the audio recording feature. And again, here I've got examples of how teachers are using it. So you've got, for example, uh, Karin here talking about using it for retrieval practice. Uh, uh, King Zeely talking about using it for self-assessment. Um, quite a nice idea if you're into Bitmojis, you can use you can create your own uh, memes in quizzes and that could be a Bitmoji saying, you know, well done or you can do it or uh, or what have you. Um, and yeah, that's fantastic. And then in the next. I have slide, used quizzes yep. and I absolutely love it. Yeah. Fantastic. Have you used the audio recording option in quizzes? Uh, yes. So the audio. Yes, I, I have. And um I I guess I use other features other I had already used other tools for audio so I don't use it as much but that's but it works just as great so yeah. so in this um on this slide it just tells you how to record audio for uh, the different questions so you can create listening comprehension as audio files which I think is awesome within quizzes so it has all the features of quizzes but you can now add audio so um if we had longer, I would do it live, but um, it's fine just to give people a flavor of how to do that. So um, if you have a look at those articles, it explains. And I, and I think it's it's amazing. Like I was telling you earlier, Joe, um, sometimes it's good to spend a good chunk of time on tech, but sometimes we just need an overview just to see, oh, you know, yeah. I haven't tried that one. I haven't tried yeah. that one. Yeah, peruse on it later uh, so that I can, because, you know, 
um, it's like the question Michelle was asking about Bokuru. Well, maybe that's not the tool for her, but she can use Bokuru for something else before it says find something else. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. and I, and I appreciate with sort of cognitive overload, it, there's only so much people can take in within say an hour or so. So I'm just going to play a little video if it's okay. So th this this presentation is all about you know pedagogical paradigm shift, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little video of tweets which people put together based on the question: Do you feel as if you've uh, experienced a pedagogical shift, paradigm shift during uh, lockdown? So I'm just going to play this for you now, if that's okay. It's only a couple of minutes long. And just to give you like a UK perspective of how we're dealing with lockdown or how we've dealt with lockdown. Here we go. And there we are. So thank you ever so much for uh, listening. This is uh, my last little um, bit, which is my dancing bitmoji, which I used. Uh, I created using um, a screen recording in Google Slides. So I just um, took uh, my different bitmojis, put them into Google Slides. I then flipped them. I duplicated the slide, flipped them using the rotate option, and then screen recorded the results on my iPad and made it into a GIF using an, an app called IMG PLAY, IMG PLAY, and that's how you can make your Bitmoji dance. And just the thought, um, if you would like some extra help on remote teaching, um, that's another GIF that I made in uh, Keynote and Image Play. Then I've got um, a number of different example sessions here. If you're interested, uh, you've got the QR code there as well. Um, I would be delighted to help. I'd be delighted to do webinars for you for your uh, department uh, or departments, if you get in contact with me, I've given you my contact details already. Um, there are 18 example sessions there on everything you could possibly want around remote teaching and uh, and languages using technology. Um, and again, I'd like to thank Bertha for this opportunity. It's been amazing. And thank you for all the, the feedback. And if you'd like the presentation, there it is. Feel free to scan the QR code or to, um, to, to use the is.gd um, link, which I created for you. And that's me. So I don't know if we have any other any any other questions or anything else that we want to say. But um, it's been an absolute pleasure, Bertha. So thank you so much for this opportunity. 
so much, uh, Joe, for being here tonight. And, and you certainly did uh, teach me uh, several new uh, places to go and try out and uh, gave me some great ideas tonight. So thank you so much. And I know that a lot of our audience tonight, it's, um, you know, they were just um, so Marvel with the Google Earth feature and, you know, how they can use that with Flipgrid. And then they also said oh, wonderful things about um, Flippity. And I mean, just, I'm sure everybody's taken away um, different things because we are all at different parts of this journey. And um, ultimately, you know, I'm just grateful that everyone's here tonight and they have taken the time to join us. And uh, uh, so this is the link to your presentation. And yeah. I'm also going to add this link to a master document that a lot of people in this group have access to where I keep all of the um, presentations so that people can easily find them if they don't want to be looking through the Facebook group. Uh, you know, in three weeks from now, this is going to be this this presentation is going to be hard to find in the Facebook group because people post in here all the time. So we have a master document and I'm going to be sharing the link on the comments so that if you don't have that master document yet, you can access it. And actually, if you're brand new to this group and you're listening, that master document has over 15, 20 presentations on all kinds of topics as well that we have done here on Transformation Wednesdays at inside this uh, Facebook community. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I don't think there are any more questions other than um, the question about the slide. Um, so I'm gonna make sure, I'm sure people already got the QR code, but I'm gonna make sure I go back in here and I put that link for them so that they can easily access it. Um, and if they have any questions, again, they can contact you on uh, yep. Twitter, right? Yep. So those are my contact details. So at Joe Dell on Twitter and then uh, Joe Dell at talk21.com uh, is my email are, address. And I know that some people were here from the beginning, but some people, you know, came in later. Uh, your uh, YouTube channel, you said was? Uh, Joe Dell 100. Joe Dell 100. So if you just do, just do a search for Joe Dell 100 on YouTube and then you'll find it. Um, I've shared the link already in the presentation, but you'll, yeah, you'll find it there. In the in this presentation that I've shared with everyone as well, uh, on the slide which talks about tilt webinars, um, one of the there's three links at the bottom. One of them is my YouTube channel, so you can then find it. All the, all those hours and hours and hours of webinars are all there, available completely for free. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for you know putting that together, linking all the resources. Um, it certainly helped us because God knows time is something we have very little of these days. So. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, that's exactly that's that's why I wanted to reach out because I know that we've done all this work in the UK, and I think that um, we just want to share it with everyone. And uh, we really feel for world uh, language educators in the US. Um, if particularly if you're you know feeling very worried about using technology, if you're not used to using it, then we want to share all those um, webinars right. that be provided by specialist language teachers um because it will that, that's what it's all about it's all about helping and supporting Absolutely. the community i am so excited you know that you are in another part of the world and you know your teachers are experiencing different things and that's what we teach in our world language classes you know to have that broadened uh, vision and you know to connect with people from other places because mm -hmm. you know they have different ways of doing things or, or you know maybe we're more similar than we think uh, mm. So just making those discoveries, I think this is great. Thank you so much for being here.